Because the Lamb of God was slain, I would not be here saved today if God did not justify the Lamb's saying. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. I don't think we celebrate the Savior enough. I don't think we declare Jesus Christ. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. If I would preach your message today, the title of that message would be Justification by Faith. Say that with me, justification by faith. Now the Hebrew writer said, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Hallelujah. Justification. To treat or account as righteous acquittal, God's gracious act grounded in the death and resurrection of Christ. Romans 4.25 By which he accepts into right relations with himself the sinner who by faith Trust himself to Jesus Christ. Going to the book of Romans, the fourth chapter, so that I can give us some foundation concerning faith. I feel him. Now, God, here we are before you. The result of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because of that testimony, our sins have been forgiven. The blood shed covered the mercy seat by which we have gained the atonement. You have pardoned our sins and iniquities. Because Jesus Christ died in our stead. So here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you're our God. Hallelujah. Four and one. What shall we say then? That Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found. For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory. We're but talking not before about God. Abraham. Come on, Abraham. But not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. The 13th verse. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore, it is of faith 
that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were. Who against hope believed in hope? Who quickened the dead? I want you to understand he's talking about a man a hundred years old and whose wife womb had dried up. God had promised him that he would be the father of nations. Oh, bless God Almighty. I want you to hear me. Because Abraham believed God. Yes. Underscore Abraham believed God. Yes. Remember what the scripture says. Read Sister Green. Who against hope believed in hope. Who against looking at Thank you, God. the situation. You just told me I'm going to be the father of nations. Did you make a mistake? Do you know how old I am? You mean my wife and I? Do you know how old Sarah is? Thank you, God. Thank you, God. He said, who against hope believed in hope? I want you to hear me because we have to have faith. Faith to trust God that what he said he's going to do. Christ is not come as the scripture had said the trump sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. But our faith must be valid. Come on, Sister Green. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. I, I don't have a son right now. You must not. Be talking about me. He didn't say that. But who against hope. Believed in hope. Hope is expectation. Thank you. Hope is expectation. That what will happen is going to happen. So against hope, he believed it's going to happen. So much so, come on, Sister Green. And being not weak in the faith, he considered not his own body now dead. Being, now, I want you to hear me. You have spoken to me a promise. And... That promise is going to be fulfilled in my body. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. I want you to go and remember what he said in the fifth verse. But to him that worketh not, no, that wasn't it. For what said the scripture, Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Go ahead, Sister Green. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He said, he was not weak in faith. You got to understand the devil. He comes to make you doubt what yes. God said. Yes. 
That's where your faith and confidence in God has to kick in. Now faith is the substance Thank you, God. of things hoped for or expected to come to pass. It's the evidence things not seen. I see it, though I don't see it. I see it because God said it. Hallelujah. Though it tarry, I wait for it. Yes. For the just Thank shall God. live God. by faith. Write the vision. Make it plain. Hallelujah. Stand right there. Don't waver. Ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavereth. Like the wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. Hallelujah. Come on Sister Green. Read that again. And being not weak in the faith. In faith. He considered not his own body now dead. When he was about a hundred years old. Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't think about his, his deadness, nor the deadness of Sarah's womb. Come on, Sister Green. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. He didn't stagger. He didn't stagger. He did not doubt at the promise that God gave him through unbelief. I don't mean no harm, y'all. I don't mean no harm. Y'all pray for me. Oh, bless God. But I don't care what the numbers look like. I don't care how deadly the pandemic. I got a word from the Lord that told me I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I don't care what the atmosphere looks like. I trust God. In God, and I judge him faithful. Hallelujah. I can't stop. I can't stop preaching the gospel. I can't stop evangelizing. I got to do the will of the Lord. Hallelujah. Because God told me all that will live godly go suffer some persecutions. As the Father had sent me, so sin are you. Come on, Sister Green. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Being Fully persuaded. Thank you, God. Y'all hear me? Fully persuaded. Hallelujah. Being fully persuaded. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. That what he had yes, promised, yes, God. Thank you. he was Thank able you. to perform. Thank you, God. Anybody waiting on something? justification the process by which sinful human beings are made acceptable to a holy God to be vindicated or pardoned of a charge the doctrine as declared by Paul is essentially that of reconciliation between sinful men and God the pardon is gratuitously granted as an act of grace in spite of the actions of the offender. The sole means of justification is the death of Christ on the cross. The conditions are repentance, baptism, and faith. Raised for our justification of many offenses unto justification. When God justifies, he charges the sins of man to Christ and credits the righteousness of Christ 
to the believer. Thus, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. Come on, Sister Green. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. So, because Abraham believed God. I want y'all to hear me now. I'm going to make a statement. Because Abraham believed God at what he said to the latter. Hoping against hope. Knowing and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, not only able, but he was going to do it. So you got to watch how you receive the word of God. Because the word not mixed with faith did not profit them. So when God gives us a word, then it's up to our response to be acceptable, whether it's validating whether you got faith in God or not. Go it tarry. In other words, when he say wait, keep on trusting based on your confidence. Hallelujah. Don't mean no harm. But I believe based on the time that we're in, we need revival. Y'all hear me? I believe we need rebooting. We need a restoration revival that'll put us back where we need to be to advance the kingdom of God. That we have the fire, the fervency, the vigor, the vitality needed to stay steadfast because the winds of adversity are blowing. Be ye steadfast, unmovable. Yeah. When he says unmovable, in other words, don't you deviate from what God said. If God says stay and wait, then don't let nobody cause you to move. Stay right there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My Lord. Oh, my God. Thank you, God. My Lord. Thank Help, you. Me Help, Help, me Help me here. Help me here. Help me here. By your spirit. By your power. Yes, God. Let your anointing come. Yes, God. Let the Holy Spirit make the intercession. Yes, God. Oh, my God, we declare. Thank we you, declare yes, God. that we are your people. Yes, God. That's what we say to ourselves. Oh, We've convinced ourselves that we are your people. Mm. And God, we need you to come again. To validate, to make it known whether we are your people, we are your heritage. Seeing the harvest truly is plenteous and the souls of men are dying. God, and we are seemingly inactive towards doing kingdom business. So, God, hear the cry of your servant. Come and speak to us. Come and give us attentiveness that we might be sensitive to your divine will. Show us how to differentiate yes. 
between the good and the bad, yes. the real and the unreal, yes, the holy and the unholy, that we might set ourselves apart for right and righteousness, that we might gird up the loins of our minds, be sober. Yes, God. Take away the foolishness of Take our doing. Away, Rid us of the frivolity mm. that overwhelm us and plague us. Sanctify us. Make us acceptable yes. in the beloved. Yes. Show us how to be led by the Spirit. Show us how to walk in the Spirit yes. so that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Show us how to crucify the flesh. In Jesus' mighty name. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Take away the carnal. Take it away, God. Take away the carnal. Out of our doing. Out of our being. Come and sanctify the temple. Come and wash us with the blood of testimony. The blood of Jesus Christ. Come and make us clean. Come and purge us of all unrighteousness. Take away the evil. Make us acceptable. Yes, Lord. My God. We have a tendency to come and congregate. But God, very seldom do we come and worship. He told us that you are spirit. And they that worship you must worship you in the spirit and in the truth. May we not confuse the two. That we're congregating. That we're socializing. But not ready. To worship. God. That's an act of the spirit. That's a power of God. That's the doing of the almighty. For you seek it such to worship you. In the spirit and in the truth. I have a petition. That you would come in our midst. That you would walk in the midst of your people. That you would declare righteousness. That you would pull down every stronghold. That you would unseat the enemy. That you would cast the devil out. In the name of Jesus. That you would declare holiness. God. Show me. My responsibility. As the pastor. Of a congregation. Why. Did you save me. Why did you save us. What is. Your position. Concerning us. What is your desire? And are we fulfilling that desire? Abraham, the servant of the Lord, that believe you, even though the odds were totally against it coming to pass in the physical, but you spoke and you brought it to pass. You made of Abraham what Abraham couldn't make of himself. God, in the name of Jesus, you said not by might, nor by power, but you said it's by your spirit. So God, will you come in our midst and let it be a spiritual manifestation. Let the glory of God come and visit us. We need you now. We can't do it. Forgive us for going about not waiting on the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. Fill us again. Wash us again. Let the glory of God consume us. Forgive us the carnal conversations. Forgive us any slothfulness. Forgive us a lack of consideration. Not living by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. Forgive us for not maintaining the covenant relationship. Forgive us for being slack, slothful, 
and unconcerned. Forgive us for not reading and studying your word. Forgive us for not crucifying the flesh. Forgive us for not fasting and praying. Forgive us for not pursuing righteousness. Forgive us for not forgiving and for not releasing one another. Please. Please, Lord. Please. As it was in the days of old. When the Holy Spirit was in charge. When the Spirit of the Lord came in the midst of the congregation. According to your word. Wherever two or three were gathered together in your name is touching and agreeing. You said you would be God in the midst. God, this is not an operation that you sanction for man to do without the Spirit. So, I pray, if you will, give us another opportunity to do it according to your wishes, to keep your divine will, to walk according to your will. Wash us together, lift us up together, pour out of your Spirit. God, if you will, we allow the Holy Spirit uh, to come uh, and give us a breakthrough. God, take us uh, into your righteous realm uh, and feed us uh, on the milk and honey of your divine word uh, and cause us uh, to grow in grace. Yes, God. Yes, God. The fifth chapter, Sister Green of Romans. I'm almost through if the Lord says so. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul says, the only way your sins are going to be pardoned the only way sin will be forgiven is going to be because of your faith. It's going to be because you believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, God. You can say, well, I believe that. But no, I'm not talking about the way you're thinking. I'm talking about what is your real response have you been totally consumed by the creator God? Did God render you free from the clutches and the control of satanic forces? Satan had me bound. He had you bound. But whom the Son set free is free indeed. He gave us opportunity to have access to the free gift. The free gift is by faith, by grace. Are we saved through faith? And that not of ourselves is the gift of God. If there's anybody out there that have really been sanctified, you know what I'm talking about. Anybody out there that have ever been delivered from your transgressions, hey. you know what I'm talking about. Hey. Anybody ever had a relationship so intimate Thank you, God. that you couldn't tell God enough how much you love him? Oh, yes. Every day you're in his presence. Hallelujah. Well, I believe we need to get back there. Thank you, God. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Hallelujah. Read Sister Green as I close. By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Therefore, can you just indulge me? Therefore, just a minute. Therefore, in summation, getting to the point, you're justified 
just like Abraham, that God accounted unto him for righteousness. Your faith justifies you so that you have peace. You become reconciled. Your, your sins have been remitted. You're reconciled by faith. And we have peace with God. I want you to understand. Before faith, I was an enemy. You were an enemy. Sin made us enemies to God. Because we didn't have his nature. We were of sin. Satan was our father. And the works of our father that's what we did. We were known by the fruit we bear. But through faith, we became justified. The sins that separated us from God, God because we believed in his word that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him they can be justified. They can be pardoned. Their sins can be forgiven. I am forgiven because of my faith that God gave me to believe in him. Faith cometh by hearing and that hearing the word of God. While I stand and preach the word to the people of God, it's an opportunity for anybody to catch on by faith. The word of God will quicken you. The word of God will prepare your heart that whatever God says, you're ready to receive it. Come on, Sister Green. And rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. He said, listen, because you got faith, you got access into this grace, the grace that brings salvation, the grace that reveals truth, the grace that allows me to be a partaker of the nature of God. Hey, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world, and it's all because of grace. Grace, I'm saved by grace. Uh, it's the free gift. He said, if I worked, I deserve to be paid. But this is not something that I worked for that he gave to me. It was the free gift of grace. God's unmerited favor that he showed towards us through Jesus Christ to reconcile us, to bring us back into a right relationship with him. Am I talking to anybody today? Yeah. I hope I'm stirring the minds of the believer because if we allow ourselves, we'll become slowful. You all hear me? You're not at church all the time like you were. You're not inside of the building. Nobody's account calling you, like holding you accountable. So if you're not careful, People can become slowful. They can become careless. So sometimes pastors have to do the work of an evangelist, have to start from scratch and declare again the righteousness of God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue? In sin, that grace may abound. Do I take grace for granted? Do I approach God haphazardly as though what I do, he'll forgive me of it? No. How that we shall have dared to sin. 
live any longer therein. I got to look at it. I got to analyze it. I got to deduce it. What is my salvation all about? It's really all about God's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. He said it purposefully. For God so loved the world. Even when we were dead in sins. Thank you, God. Even when we were enemies. Christ died for us. So that it can be the free gift. Because no man could achieve it. We were all in sin. Shaping in iniquity. But God let the word be made flesh. Full of righteousness. Full of grace. Full of truth. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, walked in the strength and the power and the authority of the Son of God. Had authority, he went to the cross being the Son of the living God. Thought it not robbery Thank to be God. equal to God, but humbled himself even to the death of the cross. Yes, but Isaiah said, and I want you to catch it, he said, but he was wounded Thank you, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Talking about justification. The penalty was paid for. Yes. The demands of God was adequately fulfilled. Christ, the perpetuation of our sins. Hallelujah. Christ died. Hallelujah. Yeah. Reconciliation. The process by which God and man are brought back together. Restoration of harmonious relationship between God and man. The death of Christ on the cross was indeed God's act of reconciliation. In other words, he said, hey, y'all, Christ died so you can get back with God. Christ died when you were a stranger, when you were an outsider and you couldn't get in. Christ died so that you can have this relationship with God. Rejoice! Hallelujah. Propitiation. Propitiation is an atoning sacrifice. Specifically the death of Christ viewed as appeasing God's divine justice. So listen. God demanded justice. Every one of us was guilty. And we were subject to the penalty. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. You say, man, why are you preaching like that? God was God wants us to remember the death of Jesus Christ. He wants us to gird up the loins of our mind and always be sober. The thief cometh not but for to kill, steal and destroy. You would be surprised. You might be and you might not be at the number of people that have become lackadaisical, the number of people that have become slowful, the number of people that really are not mindful of their own behavior, the number of marriages that are on the rocks during this pandemic. The number of people that have gone spastic. I'm talking about that once used to shout in your church and other churches. But they're nowhere to be found now. They spend time and pleasure. So you wonder 
why the Lord would get me to preach now the way I'm preaching because he's not willing that any of us should perish. He wants us to be sober watching unto prayer. Not going through the motions. Not having the form and denying the power. Seeking the Lord while he may be found. Praying one for the other. I'm going to tell you how serious it is. It's so serious that you need to pray continually for me. And I need to pray continually for you. I shouldn't take it for granted that you're going to stay with God. I got to pray your spiritual welfare. Because the devil want to deceive you. Hey, he not playing fair. Fair is right. And he ain't right. He's got a one track mind. Kill, steal, and destroy. But I'm come that you might have life. Hallelujah. 